In this video, we'll be covering Kibana again. We'll be looking a lot deeper at the visualizations you can build as well as using them for dashboarding. Overall in this section, we're going to take a look at the ways you can impress your boss with charts and graphs. We'll use those charts and graphs to build a heads-up dashboard to show your data set. Then we'll cover, again, the sharing of visualizations and dashboards. This will be a review of a section we covered earlier. And then we're going to look at Kibana and see how we can see some of the built-in dashboards and built-in visualizations to monitor the health of your Elastic Stack. All right, let's start out by figuring out how we can impress your boss with charts and graphs. You know, we all do this for somebody else. We're not, I mean, we may be doing this for fun. We may be doing this to learn something new for ourselves. But uh, most likely we're doing it at work. So we need to figure out how we can show our boss or show our, our supervisors and, and executive teams that we know our data and we know how to make our data sing to us, have our data tell us a story. So in this video, we'll be looking at some of the different visualizations we can build. We'll be looking at the donuts, because you know donuts. Uh, we'll be looking at line graphs, word clouds, maps, and metrics. There are other visualizations that come built in with Kibana. We don't have time to cover them all, but what I'm going to do is show you the process it takes to find a visualization and configure it and, and experiment with it to portray what you're trying to portray. So let's start here. This is a dashboard that we are going to build. The data we have is an example data set we have from Elastic. It's available here on their github.com slash Elastic, and it's in their examples project. So here they'll have an exploring public data sets folder. And under that, there'll be an NYC underscore restaurants folder. This page shows you how to download the data and re-index it within your Elasticsearch cluster. So there are two options. They tell you you can restore a snapshot. Oh, and we'll talk about snapshots in a future video for scaling Elastic. And uh, they have a Python script you can also load the data with. So I ended up going the restoring the index snapshot option. It worked really well. It took a couple of minutes to load the data, uh, but now I have it all available to me. So again, you can go to this website at github.com slash elastic slash examples slash exploring public data sets slash NYC underscore restaurants for New York City restaurants. Readme.md is the file that has the instructions in it. So you can see in this dashboard that we're focusing on some data here in New York City and a bunch of different information here. And then I'm going to walk you through Kibana on how we can build these. All right, so let's jump into Kibana and we'll stay in Kibana until we're done. And we're going to work step by step to make these visualizations. All right, first things first, we need to go to the management tab and index patterns again. And we need to create a new index pattern for NYC star. So this is time-based data because it's a lot of information about restaurant health inspections. So they all happen on a time period. We can look right here. We'll see the dates. We'll see the grade date, inspection date, inspection type, etc. So I'll walk you through how do we create this. So I'll remove the index pattern I have, and I'm going to create a new one. So I'll go to my index patterns again, like we've done a few times, and I will click on the create index pattern in NYC star. So there it is. I have my NYC restaurants index. So I'll create next step, time filter field. You know what? We don't have to use a time filter field if we want to, but I'll show you what, what, what's in there anyway. So we'll go by inspection date. We'll create the inspection pattern. For now, I'm going to mark this as my favorite, as a starred pattern. So we'll go over to my Discover tab, and no results. Like I said, it is open source data, so I know it's old data. So here, I'm just looking back over the last five years. And you'll see where we have this data. All right, so let's save this search. Up at the top, we'll click Save, and we'll say Packed Elastic NYC Data. And we'll hit Save. So that'll save our search with our time range and all that, so we get all the data we need. Now let's start with the map. I love maps. So we'll click on Visualize, and we're going to click the plus button at the top to make a new map. Um, here, I know the data, so we're going to be looking at coordinate maps. Our, our data has single geo points within the data. There's no uh, regions or, or ranges. So we'll start with a coordinate map. 
and we will pick from a saved search packed elastic NYC data and we'll hit play okay we have nothing so now where we start we need to find what we want to show so I want to end up showing the grade or the the average grade so let's well let's start and find our data first so we'll do count we'll do geo coordinates you see I, I press the geo coordinates down here aggregation I want to pick a geo hash so if you're not familiar a geo hash is a really nice way of showing a latitude and longitude in one piece of data. So if you look at the data, it looks like a, a string of ASCII characters. And, and the longer the string is, the more detailed or the more fine-grained that data point is. So if it's a three-character geo hash, then it's representing a pretty large region. I don't know, the United States. So if it's a string of eight characters then it's a lot more fine-grained and, you know, it could point down to a street. It could point down to a specific address. So we'll be looking at geohashes and we'll select our field. And there is a field called coordinate, which is a geo point. It is, a point is a very specific one point in space. I'll leave the default values here. We'll add a custom label for restaurant location. And this is a cool part. What I love about the visualizations and how we can play with them, we can press play. And we'll press play and look, we have our geopoint. Now, geopoints, again, it, it have a nice way of kind of aggregating the geopoints or the geohashes by effectively truncating the uh, finer grain digits or characters. So when we zoom in, we know all of our data is in New York City. So we'll continue to zoom until we get to a view that looks pretty cool. One, maybe one more. All right, there's our data. So this is a lot finer grain data. So you can see we have 5,000 restaurants, more accurately, 5,000 inspections within this data point right here. I can't even hover. Oh, here we go. There are a couple of inspections down here. So let's not do count. Let's do an, let's see, a max of their score. A high score means bad. I'm not intimately familiar with this data. Let's look. So now, so you saw I, I picked max. I picked score. And I pressed play. Let's change it to average and see what the data visualization looks like. Again, we'll pick score. So that changed a little bit. So our averages are kind of moving up. All right, let's center this. And now we want to save this visualization. So I'm going to press, oh, here's a fun thing we can do under options. This is another thing. You just got to play around and find different things. So we want, I love heat maps. So I'm going to change this to a heat map. And again, I'm going to press go. There we go. Now we can see aggregations that stand out. So this is the visualization I want to use. So I'm going to press save. We'll call this one packed, uh, elastic, New York City heat map. All right, so we have that one visualization. Now, the next visualization we're going to build, let's build a donut because who doesn't like donuts? So again, we'll click on Visualize on the left. We'll add a new one. Uh, where are my donuts? There's my pie. Donuts are pie charts. So let's click a pie chart. The same data search, packed elastic New York City data. Now... Let's break this down by the number of restaurants that are, or let's break it down to see the, the ranges or the counts of restaurants by cuisine. So we'll see the count, and we want to slices, which is going to slice our donut or our pie. Um, if we split chart, we can do a sub-aggregation. So which will basically, in, in this case, well, I'll show you the data and then I'll explain what a sub-aggregation would be. So here we're going to do a terms because I care about the cuisine. And let's press play. This shows me the top five cuisines in our data set. So we see we have American. We have 100,000 American inspections, 20,000 pizza inspections, etc. So let's make this one a little bit different. Let's make a little more. I want more data. Love data. So Japanese came in, bakery came in, Mexican pizza, Italian, etc. So that's pretty cool. Let me save this, and then I'm going to show you what the sub-aggregations are to split the chart. So this will be packed elastic 
New York City donut. So I'll say that. All right. So what I showed you over here, let's kill this and let's split the chart. And we're going to select an aggregation again. We'll do terms on the same one. We'll do cuisine description. We'll press play. Whoops. Oh, we need to split slices first. Let's do that. So slices. Let's remove that. Slices. Terms. Same cuisine description that we've used. Press play. That's what our data looks like. So it turns out you can't add split charts for this pie chart. But we can do a split slice. So we can show the... Let's pick something. Let's show terms. I want to show you the grades per. So we'll find the grade. And we'll hit play. So here, <laughs> this is a fun chart. So we can see in the pizza category... They mostly got blank grades, a bunch of A's, a bunch of B's, a bunch of C's, P's. I don't know the grades. But, it, but anyway, so that's how you can kind of do these, these bounded metrics or sub-aggregations. We'll find another chart. We can split the chart later. And we'd save the pie chart. So now let's do another visualization. And in this one, I'm going to show you. Ooh, word cloud. Let's show you a word cloud. Uh, tag cloud. Okay, we'll come down here, we'll click Tag Cloud. We'll pick our search again. We will pick Tags on the Terms. And in this one, we want to show the street. Uh, da, 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 address. Street. Play. All right, so here we've got a, a visualization that shows the number of times this term is represented in the size of the word. So Broadway is the most popular road in the inspection data set. The other ones are smaller. So let's play with this tag size. Okay, you can see it's set by count. We could also do an average of the score. That's kind of cool. So this road has the highest score. This road has the fifth highest score. Uh, but let's go back to the counts. Again, I want to get a couple more of these. So let's do 10 of these to make our word cloud cool. Let's see what options are here. So text scale linear, log, square root. Just playing around to see what visualization I like. Right angled. Oh, this could be kind of cool. <laughs> That's a fun visualization. Uh, multiple. What does that do? Oh, that's my favorite. Let's let's do that. Oh, we can make it even bigger and even smaller. Oh, now we're cooking here. Okay, so see, we're just playing around. Making our visualization look how we want it to. Let's save this one. New York City Word Cloud. And we'll save that. All right, we have three more visualizations I want to make. So let's knock these out real quick. The next one's going to be a line chart. Same data set. And here we have to specify what we want this to look like. So the y-axis, remember in your coordinate planes from geometry class, the left up vertical is our y-axis. The bottom horizontal is our x-axis. So let's do a count on the left axis. The y-axis, whoops, I don't want two of them. We want a count. Okay, cool, easy enough. So we'll call that count. And let's put the x-axis at the bottom. And we want to show the terms for comments. Is there a comments field? Violation code. Ooh, that might be cool. What do we see in here? Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> so in this one, I want to show the time ranges. So I messed that one all up. So let's do a date histogram. This is important. Over on the inspection date. And so I'll show you what this means. So now we've got our inspections over time. Well, it's by auto. So this one's per month, as it says at the bottom. So now we can do a sub bucket here. We can split the series. So if you're Excel familiar or graphing familiar, each line is a series. I'm going to break this series up by the inspection type and see what that shows me. Here we go. So now we have a bunch of different series that show our cycle inspection, reinspection, etc. 
That's cool. So let's save this one now. Line inspections. So we'll save that. Now let's see what happens if we can do a split the chart on this one. I'm just going to kind of pick something. Let's do a significant terms on building. Nope. Three. That didn't really do much, did it? Let's go back to... Oops, is it still... Oh, it's running. This one's hurting it. All right, you may have noticed that my screen is reset now. Uh, apparently I crashed Cabana. It doesn't like doing that big split chart. So let's change this to not split the series. Let's split the chart with that same terms. There we go. Now I can show you a split chart. So that's kind of what it does. If we had sub aggregations and stuff here, it might be helpful, but you can play around again. And so here you can set all different kinds of values, color codes, some different settings, grids. We can make this an area chart with a button or a bar chart with a button. I've said it a few times, back to whatever you like. I mean, play around with your data and make it good. All right, now let's show you a metric. So a metric is one point of data. So here we'll do a metric for that data set. And we will do, we don't want to count, but I want an average score. So over our entire data set, we have a 14.933 average score. And I'll show you why that's important when we get to our dashboard. So here we'll hit save. This is called a metric visualization. All right, so now we're going to make a, another metric visualization to show the number of unique restaurant names, DBA names. So here we'll add another metric. Pick our search. And here, instead of a count, we're going to do a unique count on the DBA field. DBA. So here we're going to see that there are 19,608 unique restaurants in our data set. So that's pretty cool. So now we can do, we'll save this one. All right. We have beaten the heck out of our visualizations. We did a donut, line graphs, which we also looked at area and bar graphs, our word cloud, or term cloud. We built a map, and I showed you the metrics and a couple different data sources in there. The key takeaway from this is go explore. Figure out your data and figure out how you can best visualize whatever query you want to show. Figure out if you're counting. Figure out if you're doing an average on a number field or a max min on a number field. Or, do, you know, if you're looking at the terms, do you want unique terms or all terms? There's a whole lot in there. So play around, change things, press the play button, and see what happens. And try not to crash Kibana like I did.